Hello everyone. We've got 1 p.m. We had Johnson at Fosdem 2016. And now, soon we'll be here to talk about open sourcing private right atlas from Philip Hongo. So I think let's go. And the, the interesting thing to note here is that 
every region sets its own policy. So it's possible that you can get, for example, you still get some amount of IP for an addresses here in that region, but, but you can get almost none uh, in the US because there's a completely different policy and different, different results, and they also have completely different fee structures. So it's a uh, high organization doing the same thing, but they're doing completely different types of work. Um, then um, what happens was you have a large, relatively large group of network operators coming uh, together to discuss address policy, and then of course you don't only want to discuss address policy, so you also start discussing other stuff like DNS or IPv6 and whatnot. And then somebody, I don't know, played before that, uh, asked or suggested that the right CC could also do other stuff. And for example, we, we run one of the, the root DNS instances, the so called scale root. Um, and, but uh, we also started uh, doing uh, measuring and monitoring projects. Uh, like we have uh, a BGP monitoring project called MIS, where we collect uh, the BGP routing updates worldwide. And you can see, well, if I mount an address here, plus actually the rest of the world's here, or plus somebody bought that. Um, and we also started measuring uh, data, first with uh, a system called TGM, at around, say, 100 nodes, and that later uh, became like others. So that's sort of who we are. Then, brief, uh, others, uh, we have managed to see in a Wikipedia page, uh, so, so if you want to enhance that, <coughs> I mean officially we should not write our own Wikipedia pages, so <coughs> that's something the community should do. Um, yeah, you can read about it. <coughs> um, basically, we measure whether the internet is broken or not. Uh, we discovered lots of uh, small probes. Um, and we have, I don't know how many, about more than 10,000. Usually we can count how many are up simultaneously. And uh, they do a number of measurements that they always do. But users of the system can also come up with measurements. So if you have a website here and you want to know whether it's reachable from Latin America or whatnot, then you select some probes in Latin America and let them connect to your website and the receipt must work. But, um, and then here on the right hand side column, there's some, uh, some statistics on uh, where probes are. And recently also do some sponsoring. We now have a lot of probes in the US, but uh, because we're based basically in Europe, uh, still uh, we have a really lot of probes in Europe. And then in some other regions, it's also really hard to get probes there. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, Statistics, like yeah, the more than 9,000 active probes at the moment, uh, with lots of users. Uh, at some point we came up with a system, a uh, concept called Anchors. An anchor is uh, a red-mount PC, or well, low-end PC, uh, but it's, it's, it's a way more capable probe, so, so we can run way more measurements on it. But we also uh, run some basic services on the anchor, like uh, DNS server that has some static answers and the web server and all So you can also do measurements towards the anchors such that you can verify the reachability towards a certain region uh, of the world. Um, and some statistics that are not here but can be interesting is that at the moment we collect roughly 3,500 results per second. So it's a enormous stream of results. Um, we have also roughly, say, 10,000 um, different measurements on the system. And yeah, some of them are run by us, but, but many of them are also run by the various users of the system. Um, we, well, top thing is uh, measurement types we support. Uh, we have the normal pin trace route. Uh, we, we can, well, basically, almost any kind of DNS measurement. So it's, it's, couple of days we can also do uh, TLS A records. Um, we, we have a basic SSL thing where we can fetch the certificate but we don't do anything more. If we want to do full TLS, we haven't done that yet. Uh, you can do uh, NTP measurements and uh, 
only use anchors and targets to avoid only uh, showing up at the door of the program. Um, then, uh, well, we, we, we have a website where you can do everything, but we also have a full set of APIs uh, to, to start measurements and get results. Um, well, all kinds of specializations on the website, you can check it out. Um, we started creating a sort of, sort of online tools where um, <coughs> instead of saying ping, you would say Atlas ping, and then basically it, it would behave more or less like ping. It would schedule a measurement on Atlas, collect the results, and show it and also in a similar way as this normal, normal ping output, and you do the same thing for trace route and the DNS loops and a bit like this. Um, but there's of course some, some differences. I mean, if you pop, if you have five probes, then you get 14 less five answers. Uh, so that's different from this. Um, one thing that, that is, is really cool is, is the streaming. So um, we, we have now a live feed of, of all the measurements as they come in. And you can say, well, I want to listen to this particular uh, measurement, or I want to have all trace routes, or a lot something filtered, uh, strict, but basically you, you can just watch uh, results as they come in, you don't have to fetch them all and you just set up to sleep. Um, and then we had some uh, yeah, new visualizations uh, or cool sets like the time travel is where uh, if you uh, make a graph of ping results and you can just select I want to see results in, I don't know, September last year or what not. Um, latency one is an attempt to make the visualizations uh, more intelligent, so it, it tries to sort of compute the baseline like, and then show how it deviates from the baseline instead of that you have uh, stuff that is highly clipped or we really don't see the details. And domain one, um, we, we, for a long time, we had a service called DNS mall, and DNS mall uh, is, is basically where we monitor whether your DNS song works, but that was essentially sort of defined only, only, uh, only for the big guys. So if you were, uh, well, we would monitor the root song, and we would monitor some of the countries, certainly in the right region, and, and some other stuff, um, but that was certainly not available for ordinary people. Um, but <coughs> originally uh, the main mode used uh, a different platform. Uh, uh, we did as well use a different platform that was really able to use Atlas. And then, um, because um, basically the NS mode is doing measurements and visualization, we said, well, if uh, Atlas user will schedule his own uh, DNS measurements, yeah. then we can give the user uh, the visualizations that we already built. So we built some um, also web parts where you can configure it so, so you can download it from uh, your own domain and you get a nice visualization of uh, which probes would reach which of your names. Um, okay, so that's a short introduction of what Atlas is, what it does, a big collection of probes, uh, as a backend system that stores results, uh, website, API, and stuff like that. Uh, so what about Atlas? Um, so here, it, it gets through that because, well, I do first have slides, and first I wanted to talk about something else. Um, so she says uh, all the, the data is open, that's true. Um, so, so we have now, I don't know, the next account, maybe say 100 terabytes of data or I don't know, the numbers. Um, and you can just have it. If, if you actually want to have 100 terabytes of data, maybe you want to talk to us and how you get that. Um, but for anything else, I mean, you select what you want to have, you start downloading, and if you find out that there are issues, well, talk to us. Uh, because um, all the, the results that we collect, they are available. We're not trying to. Um, coming to the source code. So what happened was, this was it's a, it's a first generation probe, and we were handing out these things and said, well, put them in your network, it, it's cool. And uh, well, people did that. Uh, and, and so when I joined the project, I joined it, uh, it was maybe a year old or something like that, there were a couple of hundred probes in the field, and the software that was running all the probes was, was 
really hot as volunteer, I don't know if it was you know. Um, and probes were also theory it was all not very nice and hot um, So there was a lot of work to be done to make this a reliable measurement platform. And the code uh, was based on uh, UC Linux, uh, which makes a really not very capable processors. And uh, then uh, they started off with busy box and we take ping and trace routes and you modify the bits such that you can have all the one line and then you send the line to our backend system. And, and so we started modifying that and uh, uh, making those tools better. And, Make them report in JSON, and make them use the event and all that. But it was still using the next busy box. So you give the problem to somebody, and then there's bound to be some people who say, even if they don't know what it is, can I have the source card? And then we said no. And that was a bit weird, because this is TPL. So it's hard to you say no. Um, and so after a bit, I mean, I, 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 like, I always like the PSD lines way more than I like uh, the TTL, so, so I'm not really into, well, we have to advance free software a lot, but I still think we have to show respect for licenses. You can't just take TTL codes and make them proprietary or what. Um, but that, that's exactly uh, what happened. And then it's, um, well, can you do that? Well, if you look at that from a legal point of view and say, for this weekend, yes, you can do it. Nobody ever complained. We didn't get sued or whatnot. Um, didn't even make a use. So, so in that sense, yes, sometimes we uh, can just buy a license licensing and come away. And then um, we say, well, we're nice and open and whatnot. And still, people didn't question it that hard. Um, so, I thought also, personally, that, that, that's also, it, it's, it's actually ethical since you, you work on such a project. Um, so there, um, what, what happened was that I was for a long time interested in, in law, like what does copyright law really look like, what does the TPL really say, what court cases say. And then, while well, thinking about this for a while, I thought, okay, I know a nice legal loophole. Oh, cool. So now it's perfectly legal what we do, I don't have to worry. Um, so we went on for um, maybe a couple of years. That were expanded uh, tremendously. And then the reason, well, uh, I don't know, I'm not management, so I, I don't know really all the reasons of management and what, but one of the reasons I had earlier on is that suppose we release the source code, that some commercial company comes, and then there are commercial companies doing all kinds of monitoring, they take half source, spend, uh, I don't know, a couple of hundred thousand or or by a huge number of probes, sit probes in all over the world, and then they have a big measurement network with the small network, and then we're dead uh, because there's then a commercial network, and we want to have an open one. So, so that was sort of, yeah, yeah, we may have to keep the source. I mean, that we, don't, we cannot afford to have uh, people just uh, starting a competing network based on market. And then a couple of years later, um, I guess there was also some pressure, but also, okay, now our network is big enough <coughs> that we can afford to release the source because you no know, competitor will show up. There's enough support in the community that it's safe to do that. <coughs> okay, <coughs> that's nice. So now that, well, at least I can certainly I have a different problem. Um, we, we have uh, measurement code, which is just bit C, and it's sometimes relatively complex C, and we have two people writing the source, the, the code, one of them, and we essentially don't do any review. So, uh, well, we try to write our code as well as we can. Uh, but it's still, I mean, it will be public facing network code written in C, and uh, we are going to just release that. Um, hmm, what if there's security problems? This is sort of scary. Um, so, and then to make it, the situation worse is that we have two natural moments to do anything because we organize two conferences per year. And <coughs> we were going to release a head conference, and right at that time, I had already a vacation planned, so I wouldn't even be there. Uh, maybe we didn't even have an internet connection or not. So, we released the code uh, soon, so maybe a couple of days later or so. We get to, uh, somebody 
said uh, security on the board, they said, well, you have the following five, or I don't know how many issues. Oh, shit. And it turns out that that close to misunderstood the context in which the codes runs, all of the issues he found yeah, were something that were not remotely exploitable. You could exploit them if you were root on the problem. Yeah, if it were already root on the problem, that's not much to exploit them. Um, so that went really well. And, um, sort of nobody found ever any security problems in our codes by looking at the source codes. So that's, okay, that's right. Uh, <coughs> a lot of people found bugs by actually coming up with creative inputs and that triggered them, so, so it's not completely safe. Um, but then we, we got another problem, and that is we naively assume that, okay, we have this really great code base, and we have all those open source programmers, so somebody is going to write uh, enhancements to measurement types and whatnot, so they just run the code on their Linux uh, systems and they write, I don't know, well, we still don't have the DLS programs. And then it gets a pull request with a huge change, and then it has to run on these things, which is basically a Commodore Amiga with steroids. I mean, this is uh, 8 megabytes of memory, 16 megabytes of flash, it's uh, 68,000 without an MMU, so many power to store is uh, completely failed on. And uh, well, it, it's clocked a bit higher, but these things are clocked at about 30 megahertz. <laughs> and it's a bit higher than the original media. Um, so we thought about it, we thought, yeah, we, we don't really want those kinds of pull requests. Uh, 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 if, if, if we have to integrate code, then we want to know before what somebody's going to do. And we want, uh, and yeah, if, if, if the code quality is too bad, then we would have to rewrite the yeah, so it doesn't make sense. <coughs> so what we did is we only read these star files. It's not we don't, at least we don't put it on GitHub, I think somebody did. Uh, this is now a weird URL. <coughs> because I thought, well, I'll get to that later. Uh, and, and that part also worked, uh, because now we have the situation that as far as I know, nobody uses the code. Um, which, which is also, uh, in some sense, <coughs> it, it, it's really sad. <coughs> because if, um, if you want to measure something, you want to do some pitch or some tracing, I think it's, it's a really nice code base. Uh, for example, you get out of the JSON, I mean, you don't have to sort of screen scrape the output of the to figure out what it does. Um, it, it's living event, so, so very. Little resource sources, we can do a huge number of parallel tracings and whatnot. So I encourage everybody to take a look at it, play with it, um, use it for, for whatever you want to measure um, and enhance it. But, but if you think, okay, I also want to run my changes, I uh, want that to run Atlas, then please first approach me before you start doing any development. And we have cases where Researchers said, okay, I have this really nice code base, please run it on an Atlas, uh, but at least they didn't do any work yet, they just uh, looked at uh, the, the source of their own. Please integrate. Didn't really help. So <coughs> that's the probe source code. Now, um, at, at that stage, uh, we have probe source code, and we have all the probe, we have also lots of shell scripts. For some reason, nobody is ever interested in the shell scripts, but they uh, released. And uh, I guess we can release them, but what's the point? Um, and then we have uh, a large amount of code that talks to probes to send out measurements, uh, requests to collect results, or that in how to do websites. I don't know, we all have lots of stuff. That's all also not released. And there, we also sort of have, again, the problem with the competitor. Except now on a small scale, that there's some companies that say, can we have our own Atlas and then we can internally monitor our better. And then we are worried if people set up their own <coughs> Atlas systems, uh, does that cause enough fragmentation that, that there's no global view anymore? That, that, that the whole point of the system is that you can see everything, that everybody has their own instance of Atlas and that doesn't work anymore. <coughs> 
means uh, <coughs> really nice code base, pretty complex, many different servers and model. So it's also not clear if you could ever write an installation manual for it. So moving on, we are, well, now that we happy, uh, we have a project that works well in robots, um, but, but we have a community of network operators and we want them to use it and we want to use that uh, Atlas in sort of the day-to-day -day routine, which means that we want them to integrate it in their monitoring system, we want to use them from uh, one line and one bot, uh, which means that they're probably going to write some small scripts around our APIs. And then we want to encourage them to share those scripts, of course. And then um, you get the issue, like, say somebody writes a quick and dirty pro script that does something and that does it for 90% because there's some corner cases that are missed. Um, should we then publish this script and say, this is a cool script? Because <coughs> what happens if then people come back to us and say, the script doesn't work, <coughs> it's fixed. <coughs> are we <coughs> supposed to take off the maintenance <coughs> of those scripts? Um, and, and certainly, I mean, if, if, if we only do basically Python, should we take on the maintenance of world scripts or what? Uh, so then what happens, what we come up with <coughs> is the uh, Prime Atlas community gets up. And um, basically, it's, this is stuff done by the community. Uh, anybody can contribute. Uh, it, it, the people with commit rights are people from the community and uh, if it doesn't work, it's not our problem. We, we only coordinate uh, that, that it's too much here, but uh, um, we say, don't say anything about uh, the bullet. Um, and so that works very really well. Um, for example, um, there's a French guy working for uh, the French FR domain publish all kinds of nice scripts and monitoring and all that. Uh, <coughs> and he's also a lot of the community members that accept pull requests and uh, the rest of And then, like, and because of this, um, yeah, we don't give any guarantees. Uh, what we did, we organized some, uh, some hackathons and the results of those hackathons are also freely shared. I mean, anybody can download all of the data, so, so the visualizations uh, that were created in the first hackathon, yeah, everybody can use that, everybody can play with that code. Um, but um, yeah, we don't give any guarantees. And then for one of the visualizations, we, we implemented our own version that we use on the website, um, but that's just completely different companies. Um, and then we got into another new situation. Um, one of our programmers wrote uh, Custo, which is a very simple library to, to create, uh, to, to use the Atlas API. And that was mostly dormant for a long time. Uh, we used it internally a bit, um, but no, nobody really picked that up. And then uh, what, what happened uh, with sort of unique situation in that is we, we store lots of old measurement results and we have a policy that we restore measurement results as they came in at the time. And that means that if you change uh, your measurement output to formatting, then you can have different formats uh, or maybe the more bugs and whatnot. And what we do is we tag all the measurement results with the probe firmware of the probe that the probe is running uh, when it generates that result. And we try to document all those different versions and what not. So that if you get the results, then you can look up for what was it supposed to be and part of any uh, weird situations. Um, but then if you look at it as a programmer, then people were all again and again writing parsers for the measurement results, like as if it's called that firmware. This field is called that, and then if it's that for uh, that is called something else. And at some point, yeah, that, that just doesn't work anymore. Uh, so then that guy, uh, the white, was at that time working for us, uh, started writing uh, Sagan, and, and 
and so you can use the price the library that, that can take all those screenshots and you can present them in a uniform way. So you use this library that you just have for this property. And well, if it's not there, they probably get none. But if it's there and it has a different name in the past, then you still get it. And that was, of course, very useful internally. But it is also very useful for anybody who wants to use our project uh, for uh, his own scripts. Um, and then, but the thing is, because we use that library internally, we couldn't just put it on the community GitHub and accept any pull requests. So we have to make sure that we have a different GitHub repo, essentially, that is strictly controlled by us. And, uh, everybody can still submit pull requests, but we want to make sure that we be very slightly fed and make sure that it, it really works, because the next slide didn't be deployed, and we also deployed on our own website. Um, <clears throat> so, so now we have kind of basically three different ways in which we do open source with from source code, uh, where well, it's, it's there, but we don't do anything with the community, but the community GitHub, which is well, essentially the bazaar in front of the cathedral that, that we are building up. <coughs> then, due to <coughs> popular request, <coughs> we started creating a command line interface. I mentioned that already. Like you want to do Atlas page and then some target and then you get results back for the probes. So, so that's there. Um, that's also released in, in sort of the, the, the controlled way, like we accept contributions, but we do want to uh, vet them. And then, uh, because we want uh, operators to, to be able to access them easily, we also asked uh, people associated with various institutions to um, uh, add that as a package. And you see here there's a list of all the BSD, BSD, Gentle, and Arts that did that. And there's a couple in progress, but if any um, distribution wants to edit, then get in touch. Or just do it. Um, <coughs> moving on. So, so now, um, so it was sort of what I wanted to say about what we did uh, about open source. Uh, all the different types of open source. Um, now we're moving on to a project that is also um, completely open, so very interesting. And that is that if you have an IP address and you want to do a trace route, then you want to put the trace route on the map because well, you sort of want to know where your factors go. And um, for, for um, say, consumer IP addresses, they're mapped pretty accurately because usually it's all kinds of vendors that, that we want to know where somebody really lives. That makes sense. Uh, some multimedia, uh, yeah, you want to know whether somebody from this country can uh, visit, uh, watch that, or what not. But then, for, for, for the core internet infrastructure, that doesn't exist. Nobody really cared about that. Um, and there's every network operator sort of does something on its own. Some people set up the project that went that nowhere. And so this is our attempt <coughs> to try to, to map all of the, the routers on the internet. And <coughs> we try to do it just like open street map, like everybody who knows from a router where it is can just update oh, this IP is there. Um, showing an example here. <coughs> So you can see here uh, a number of trace routes because typically if you use Atlas then you lose, uh, get a number of probes so, so almost always you have a number of trace routes. Uh, you have a solid line here, I think that in this user interface that, that's the one so that, that is highlighted, that's the one you currently selected. So, so, um, and then you have the, the green one, I think that's where people <coughs> explicitly set uh, geolocation, and then there's the uh, all of the white ones, and that is where the system tries to infer it, for example, from the DMS, reverse DMS name of the thing, because in many cases, uh, operators can code uh, either place names or number codes, or whatnot, so you try, you try to guess 
uh, that kind of stuff. And if you look at some trace code, then you see, okay, this is really weird. Is this why, why is the code that and when you click on the link on the dots for that router and it's oh it mistakenly it thinks that this router is if it's in the US but it's actually in Europe, you can rotate the and fix that oh this yeah. Um, so if anybody wants to contribute to that project, uh, 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 get in touch, go ahead. And it's also the, the source code uh, probably used. Updated for at least if people want to use it in other things than uh, they want to make interfaces to the database, etc. Um, this data is also interest used in an interesting way. So now we do this is for the use case. Atlas, yep. and that is, um, yeah. um, if you uh, look at the, 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 the ISPs in a country, then you can ask the question, if you send a packet from one ISP to another, um, does that leave the country? I mean, in some cases, when you think about uh, governments buying, uh, then you want to make sure that the traffic doesn't go through the country that you don't like. And you can also <coughs> try to figure out uh, if there is an internet exchange uh, in the country, does it go through the internet exchange or not, if the dots go through one. Uh, and also here, uh, to, if, if it's leaving the country, then, then you have to have some idea where routers are. Because otherwise, you don't know if it's leaving the country. So, so this uses that, that router geolocation information to say, okay, this is to a router that we know uh, was in a different country. <coughs> um, well, here's a nice list of how you can get involved if you want to. Um, so, if you're a, a researcher, uh, if you want to do measurements with Atlas, then we have a credit system. And uh, typically, uh, if you have a probe installed somewhere, then you get that is for, for each day that the probe uh, is connected. Um, <coughs> if, if you are a member of the RIPE NCC, then you get credits. I mean, all other reasons you get credits, but also if you have a <coughs> plan for uh, scientific research, you plan to publish it, uh, and you need credits, then that's also just come and ask us, tell us what you want to do, and then if you like it, then you get well, almost permanent credits. Um, well, that's the code. Um, so, um, for example, um, we have code that, that displays results. Uh, all the results, like I said, are completely public. So, so if you want to play with that, if you want to look at, say, trace tools all over the world, you can just start downloading it. You can look at the code uh, to see if, if you can improve them, if you can start to come up with better ways to visualize, say, a trace tool. Um, we organize uh, webinars to explain how to best uh, use Atlas. Um, we came up with an ambassador concept, and basically, ambassadors get <coughs> a collection of probes that they can distribute in uh, their own uh, <coughs> circles. Um, <coughs> it's a short big. <coughs> So that we have to do for, say, countries like, uh, like uh, in, in Africa or many countries in Asia. You, you cannot just send a bunch of probes off the mail uh, to those countries because the probably doesn't arrive. Um, so if you want to do that, and if you regularly travel to two countries where we don't have a lot of probes, um, but in Dutch, and of course, we can always use sponsors. Um, if uh, well, you care enough about Atlas, care about sort of the quality of the results, then you can also uh, host the Atlas Anchor. Uh, the advantage of Anchor is that you get 10 times more credits. This advantage is you have to buy the hardware yourself. Apart from that, we do all the maintenance, so it's just the amount of time cost of buying the software is holding it in your rack and it starts working. Um, and um, well, if, if you visit exotic locations, I can place a probe there. Um, the process, I also brought a small number of probes. Uh, look at the map and uh, see uh, if there are exotic places. Okay. <coughs> and we have uh, more hackathons. So if you want to, uh, if, you, if you're interested in, in network data and you want to write tools for that or whatnot, uh, uh, these are places uh, to go to uh, to also cooperate with 
clever operators and see uh, what you can create. Um, then we have promotion for this is research oriented, but yeah, if, if, if you're a researcher and you want to present results at the right meeting, then you have a program for that. And then we have extra contact information. And basically, if you have questions right now, then I'll ask me. And otherwise, probably best to uh, send questions to the festival. <laughs> so, how there any questions? We've got oh, six minutes there is any other for questions. Someone waiting, please come up. I don't see So you mentioned you, you, know, you would like programs in exotic parts of the world. Where are you particularly short? Where where would you like probes that you don't have have lots? Oh, um, all our websites. Uh, I hope it's not too cleverly hidden. Uh, there's a link that you can click to, to register to apply for a program and you fill in the, the location where you book it. Um, we also now have a complex formula uh, based on Fibonacci uh, to compute how many probes we want to have in a particular AS. So, so we sort of try to figure out what is the size of an AS and if it's a really big uh, ISP then, then we want to have more probes there than if it's a hobby AS. So it, it's also possible that even if there are already quite a few probes in an AS that we still want more probes there. Uh, but yeah, I don't remember the formula by heart. So, so yeah, if, if you think I want to pull up something, just go to the website and register and say, oh, there and there, and possibly it 
this, I guess, you can use to protect that from the IP address that you contact with uh, when you try to register. May I come up to someone who wants to make a question? Any more questions? I don't see anyone waving at me. So, maybe let's presume all the questions are answered in this so far here. Thank you very much for the talk. And maybe some thoughts.